And a very good morning to you. This is KTT4 This Morning. My name is Jeff Morton. If you're joining us for the first time on this particular segment of the show, we look at the big stories, making headlines and also dig a bit deeper as we get analysis to really what is happening politically, socially and economically as well. We love it when you're part of the conversation. You can get me on Twitter at I am Jeff Morton or at K24TV. You can also um, get me on the WhatsApp number that will be scrolling at the bottom of the screen. And just in case your morning was a bit hectic, you didn't manage to get yourself a copy of your people daily we can sort that out very quickly and it's all from the convenience of your phone now what you do is dial the number star 550 star 4 hash once again the number is star 550 star 4 hash dial that number and get yourself a copy of your people daily straight to your phone it's brought to you by the pd and safaricom only costs you 10 shillings and a world of convenience so just in case you missed that the number that you dial star 550 star 4 hash and as you do that and get yourself a copy of your e-paper let's see what you'll be getting on the front page of uh, your downloaded copy of that let's look at that as we scroll up and look at the headline of the pd it's all about schools facing a big test reopening as far as that's concerned schools face big reopening test ministry yet to disperse infrastructure development funds with only two weeks left before the start of first term on january the 4th leaving head teachers and parents at a loss on how they would enforce covid 19 protocols and even before that, we heard very many parents and head teachers speaking about the fact that in terms of enforcing these particular protocols, really hard right now, uh, infrastructure-wise, um, right across the country. So with that time frame left, how really do we open schools um, as you move forward, that really is a key issue of concern, uh, lies right at the doorstep of the Ministry of Education and Treasury as well. And that's where it can be found on page six of um, your People Daily this morning. As we look at that, also keeping a keen eye on what was a by-election yesterday in Msambweni, violence marred mini-election in Kwale. Politicians allied to Ruto and Raila engaged in running battles with each side accusing the other of trying to steal the election. Several were arrested on this as well. You get the details of this particular story on page four and five of um, your uh, people daily. And as you can see that on the other end of uh, your paper, some of the candidates um, in yesterday's by-election, Omar Boga of ODM, Faisal Bider, an independent candidate um, right there as well, Sheikh Mahmoud of Waipa and Marere Awamachai of uh, the Vision Party right there. Uh, that story is on page four and five of uh, your people daily. You can get all the details right there. Let's quickly scroll up to the f uh, top of the page. This matters uh, regional relations and how things could be souring in in terms of a relationship uh, with uh, states of the horn of, uh, the con of, the, of the continent. rather, Nairobi Mogadishu relations worsen. Somalia has severed ties with Kenya and expelled its envoy. The move comes on a day Kenya and Somaliland signed a cooperation pact. Tricky how to deal with this particular regional relationship and how do they move forward as far as that's concerned. This story can be found on page 12 of Your People Daily with all the details there inside. And let's not forget, there's still that tricky Somali maritime uh, dispute that really hasn't been sorted out. So lots in that particular entry as far as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is concerned. But you can get that story on page 12 of uh, Your uh, People Daily with all the details therein. And even as we look at that, Kenyan medic gets COVID vaccine. Dr. Stella Ogake got the jab in the U.S., signaling hope for the frontline health workers. And this has been an issue of concern, not only concerning the vaccine, but right now we're still staring at a potential strike as far as uh, doctors are concerned. As of yesterday, hadn't gotten to a middle ground in terms of um, not downing their tools. They still have um, some days as far as their 14-day um, truce had been given. So really, how do they move forward at this particular point in time? Nurses and clinical officers still on strike um, how do they solve this particular uh, issue really um, at the government's doorstep and all of this under the COVID cloud that story can be found on page 8 of your people daily and don't forget you can get it straight to your phone the number that you dial is star 550 star 4 hash let's look at the front page of the standard now Root O'Reilly rivalry rocks Msambweni. Violence and claims of bribery mar Msambweni by elections as allies of Deputy President and ODM face off. Former Senator and MP arrested. Handshake politics plays out on polling day. And of course, um, even as the former PM had intimated, this being um, a testing ground of how um, the BBI process might be taken, of course, as it heads to the referendum. And as you can see right there, this story can be found on page six of um, your standard, all the details therein. And even as you look at that today, it's all eyes on the Senate as far as Nairobi County is concerned. Sonko loses last attempt to save a job. Impeachment motion against Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko will proceed today after Nairobi courts declined to stop the Senate from holding the debate. Um, 
and as he said uh, last week, he's going to tell it all as far as that's concerned and won't be afraid to name names. So really, it is all eyes on uh, the floor of the Senate as this takes place today and tomorrow. And you can get that story in your copy of your standard on page 7 therein. Front page of the Daily Nation now. Mighty fall of Socion, feisty trade unionist and defender of teachers' rights, now stares at an ignominious exit from office after 90 branch secretaries petitioned the Cabinet Secretary for Labour to bar Mr. Wilson Socion from seeking re-election as NAT Secretary General in the polls next year. It's been a contentious post he's been holding both as NAT SG and a member of Parliament as well. So um, might this be the time where he just closes his act and says this is his final act as far as the unionist is concerned. You can get the details of that particular story on page three of your Daily Nation. The Daily Nation also uh, keeping a keen eye on the Msambweni uh, uh, by-election, calling it a day of chaos, arrests, and bribe claims. And that story is uh, on page four of uh, your uh, Daily Nation. You can get the details right there. And even as you look at that, why Ruto changed his mind on BBI? They're digging deeper into what they're claiming as far as the nation is concerned. Um, reduced demands as far as uh, the DP is concerned and trying to get a more conciliatory tone uh, moving forward. That story is on page five of your Daily Nation. The details can be found right there. Move on to the front page of the star now. Uhuru, Raila, BBI, timeline, nightmare. County assemblies will have three months to pass or reject uh, the BBI bill. Of course, at this particular point in time, the IEBC is still very adamant that they won't do anything until they receive funds, um, especially at this particular point in time, to verify the signatures that have been presented to them. So this is where it stands at this particular point in time. But also, there's a ticking clock as far as this process is concerned, and that's why um, the star is carrying that on its front page. You can get it on page six of uh, your star right there. And as you look at that, how Odinga and Ruto's political rivalry uh, played out in Msambweni. Of course, they had said this is a testing ground for these uh, two leaders' political might, and this is why it was playing out to the field being the Msambweni by-election. You can get the details of that on page two of um, your uh, star. All the details are there. And finally, on the front page of the Business Daily, Share of bank accounts with 10,000 shillings shrinks. Uh, CBK data shows the accounts dipped to 2.49% last year from 2.62% in 2018. So lots uh, happening in this particular front. We'll be discussing more as far as this is concerned. As you look at that also on the business front, Mogadishu deploys its troops after cutting ties with Kenya. Even from an economic point of view, what does this mean in terms of um, the souring relationship uh, between um, Nairobi and Mogadishu? They're looking at that on page four of uh, your business daily. You can get all the details uh, therein. Uh, so that's what you're waking up to as far as your uh, papers are concerned this morning. But also, we are talking about business under the COVID cloud. This isn't a uniquely Kenyan phenomenon, though. You've seen it around the world. But how is Kenya responding to this? And how are the SMEs getting respite or being resilient in these times of COVID-19. That's a very pertinent discussion we're having here with players both in the industry and a gentleman who's been crunching the numbers and telling us really where we stand and more importantly, how do you move forward? Stop digging this hole and get out of it. That's a discussion we're having right here in studio. We love it when you're part of it. Welcome to K24 This Morning. Welcome back. So like I said, it's all about business today on the show. So if you're an entrepreneur, want to get into the business space as well, this is a very pertinent conversation for you. Let me get to my panel as we dig into the big stories of the day. Uh, not a stranger to the show, Reginald Kazutu. He is an economist. Welcome, Reggie. I believe this might be our last engagement for 2020. If, I, if, I, I, I don't hope so, but anyway. I, I, you are about to say you hope so? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't hope so. I, 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 it's, it's good to get rest. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that is indeed true. Thank you for making time to be on the show as yeah. well. Uh, joining us for the first time, Joseph Karanja. He's the chairman of the Kenya Independent Petroleum Dealers Association. Uh, good morning, Buena Karanja. Good morning. Asante Sana, welcome to the show. Thank you. Asante Sana. Also joining the conversation, we have the association uh, chair of the Matatu Operators of Kenya, Mr. Jimal Ibrahim. Morning, Mr. Ibrahim. Morning to you. Karibu Sana. Oh, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome to the show. And even as we start this conversation, I just want to set context of uh, the various players we have here and what they represent and what they do. Let me start with Mr. Karanja. As chair of the Kenya Independent Petroleum Dealers, who are these independent petroleum dealers? What do they do? What makes them different from, I'd assume, the other petroleum dealers? <laughs> yes. Um, 
as I said, my name is Joseph Karanja, and uh, I'm the chair of the Kenya Independent Petroleum Dealers. So Kipeda is Kenya Independent Petroleum Dealers Association. And um, we are the, 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 the petro, I mean, petroleum dealers who have independently invested uh, in this business, uh, having, you know, just uh, bought the, the properties, installed, and done everything for yourself. Mm -hmm. You are not under any umbrella. Right. You, we are, you are just alone. Okay. So we are everybody on his own, but then because of the, you know, the situations and challenges right. which are common to us, all of mm -hmm. us, then we, we came together and, and formed, formed an, an association. Body. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let me get to uh, Jamal as well as uh, chair of the Association of Matatu Operators. Jamal, let's set, um, set some context to this because we know the Matatu Welfare Association, we've heard about them um, as well. As Matatu Operators, who exactly uh, belong to this uh, body? Sorry, pardon? As the chairman of the Association of Matatu Operators, who are the Matatu Operators? Is it the owners? Is it the crew of the Matatu? Who's in the association? The operators. Currently, uh, uh, currently as we are speaking, when we say Association of Matatu Operators, there are the people who operate the Matatu. They, uh, it's uh, the owners plus the operators, the mm -hmm. Makangas and the conductors okay. and the drivers. Okay, okay. Okay, so they're all under this body. I want us to just get that context even as we move forward on this particular conversation. Let me come to Reggie and start with you so that you can get some top line numbers as far as this is concerned. As where we stand, closing 2020, very many people have been concerned with the debt of the country on where it is, and more importantly, the effect it has on each and every single person's pocket. From where you're standing, how people have been saying we're really on the edge, uh, we don't know if we'll manage to pay this as we get into a new year. How precarious is the situation or not? I, I don't think we are at the edge. We, we jumped over the cliff quite, quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you grow debt by six trillion in seven in, in seven years, uh, because when Kibaki was living, it was around um, 900, and, um, 900 and something billion. Now we're at 7.1 7 trillion. So we, we already jumped over. And, and, and I know most people will look at debt to GDP, and, and, and that is a figure that is not a good indicator. What you'd want to look at is debt service to, to, to revenue. Um, and if you look at 2018, where it was around 16%, 17%, that means for every 100 shillings uh, KRA collects, 16 goes to, 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 to pay interest. Uh, 30 shillings was going to pay uh, the complete debt interest plus capital. Right now we are close to 40, 50 uh, percent in terms of uh, debt service to, to revenue. That means for every 100 shillings KRA collects, 50 goes to uh, service, service debt. Mm -hmm. If 50 goes to service debt, we know that our current expenditure is also around um, 40 uh, something shillings per 100. That leaves only 10 shillings for development. So if you have a continuous um, revenue to expenditure gap, um, I know the government will come and tell you debt, uh, fiscal deficit to GDP. That, that figure masks the real situation. What you need to look at is what are we generating in terms of revenue and right. what are we spending in terms of expenditure. And mm -hmm. if you look at how that is deteriorated, it points to a place where we are not collecting enough revenue to, to actually run the government. It becomes worse when you look at external debt, which is in US dollars. So you look at how do we generate dollars, and the major thing that we use to generate dollars is exports. Right. Um, our external debt service to exports is close to 70, 80. For every one dollar we uh, collect in exports, um, 70 uh, cents goes to servicing debt. Um, but you need to mind that also our imports are three times, okay, currently around 2.5 times larger than our exports. That means in a real sense, we have no capacity to pay our external debt uh, because of the situation that we are in. So the current situation that we are really, really in right now is actually more precarious than, uh, than ever. And that's why you see the shilling is getting a, a beating. Uh, both people are now factoring in that element of, um, of, of, of the debt situation that we are in. Uh, we are trying to get money from IMF and World Bank, I think $2.3 billion in January to avert a currency crisis mm -hmm. um, and to show up the reserves to be able to just pay debt. And right. the problem is that after borrowing $6 trillion, you can only account for SGR. Yeah? And you wonder what has happened to the rest. Right. After borrowing $7 trillion, actually. Right. Uh, you, you look at, okay, you give $1 trillion to SGR. 
where is the other six trillion? Right. You, you cannot see it anywhere, you cannot feel it on the ground. So mm -hmm. we jumped over the cliff quite a while ago. Quite a bleak uh, observation right there. But I also want to open up this particular discussion to everyone who's running a business. We talk about SMEs being the engine of the economy. Let's have that up on screen. Uh, what government measure would best benefit your business? There's a raft of measures that the government tried to put in, especially during this COVID-19 time. But moving forward, what government measure would best benefit your business? The WhatsApp number is at the bottom of the screen. You can also talk to me at I am Jeff Morte and at K24TV. Let's start from there. And before we talk about the benefits, let's talk about the challenges as well. Uh, Jamal, in Matatu Transport right now, we've seen um, a situation where usually on a normal year, this is when your industry would be making money hand over fist. This would be the time you're making good money. But COVID has changed that scenario. What are some of the biggest challenges you faced as uh, Matatu operators? Uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, currently, as you're speaking, Sai, the first challenge that we are facing is on this COVID is uh, the issue about uh, passengers. Uh, we are not carrying the full passengers as it was before. Currently, Sahi, Wakatuko number 14 seater. Right now, we are carrying eight people. So, uh, the challenge that we are facing is through the banks. We are facing challenges through the circles where there is no savings. And there is a lot of things that uh, we are facing the challenges through it. Mm -hmm. The insurance, Haijai Punguzo, Iko Vile Vile Bado. So, currently, Sahi, Wakatuko festive season, this is the time that we should be making a lot of profit. But right. currently, we are not making that profit because traveling from Nairobi, for example, to Eldoret, Gari, Kitambo before COVID, to Kotuneka 3,000, eh, to Kotuneka 8,400, currently mm -hmm. Saituneka 3,200. Mm -hmm. And don't mm -hmm. forget that uh, the situation that we are in currently, all these vehicles, almost 65% are in loan. Mm -hmm. So for us to pay this loan, I think we are coughing from our savings. Right. So right. right now we are asking the government uh, about this issue of uh, COVID. They should treat us fairly the way they are treating even the aeroplane and the SGRs. Mm -hmm. What kubali to be full capacity, now what to party measures, strictly measures. You could want to go to the gamo guns, or to go sanitizers, na mask, na of zote. But currently they neglected us. They assumed us that atuko kwa biashara. Right. So, uh, curr so currently, say, as you are speaking, uh -huh. the losses that uh, I think the, uh, in this country, kwa transport industry, that it may make the biggest loss, this is what we are talking may make a biggest loss. Right. So, tungiaomba serikali, sisi upande etu, on our side. Ndiyo, to, for us to have a fair treatment in this field, mm -hmm. wange tuangeleshia tuwa bank, because hizi magari mingi, mara mingi ziko na loan. Right. What to party at a common ultimantinum of six months for us to pay this loan? Okay. Na dutweze ku kuza biasharetu. Okay. But it's, right now, as you are speaking, mm. our business is not in a stable condition. It's interesting you say that, Jamal, because um, there was a directive from the government um, that was requesting, um, you know, commercial banks to give some reprieve to those who had taken loans. Ndiyo mweze kujipanga moving forward. Wasn't that affected when you are looking at a loan in a bank? They didn't get that reprieve on their loans from commercial banks. Uh, uh, Jeff, currently, as you are speaking, neither say my yo, akuna kitu kama may take place. Mm. Still, eight months down the line, we are still coughing from our pocket. The loan that you are supposed to pay for, like one hundred and ten thousand, currently saigari ile pesa ni thirty thousand. You have not counted for insurance. You have not counted for garage. There is a lot of things that uh, you have not counted for. Right. So currently, say as we are speaking, government akuna mali mekelea mkono yaki kasema, we are doing this for the transport industry, for them to survive. Okay. So currently, as we are speaking, neza sema serikali me to neglect kwa department ya transport. Vile vile tu jefo mwenye unaona, ndege na beba full capacity kutoka Nairobi mbaka Mombasa. Mimi kutoka tu Kayole, mbaka Nairobi, mbaka CBD, that is 15 minutes, Na bebeshua, less capacity. Na bado ni take all the measures that serikali natakikana. Ndege na beba from Nairobi to Mombasa for one hour. Na bado ni full capacity. Then it means there is unfair competition 
where we are currently. Okay, I hear what you say in terms of it's not uh, been perceived to be a level playing field between these two industries. Let me talk to another player in transport as well. Um, you're fueling the economy literally, Mr. Karanja. And of course, you understand probably the first uh, challenge might be to do with um, the shilling versus the dollar in terms of um, getting this product in. But what are the challenges uh, petroleum dealers are facing with right now? Because every single time you watch the news, when the price of fuel goes up, Everything else, even for those who don't have cars, you'll pay more to Mr. Jamal so that you can board your matatu, your food costs more. What are some of the challenges uh, that have been faced, especially during this uh, COVID time? Okay, uh, for us who, for those of us who are dealing with petroleum, it's very tricky. And in fact, um, I, w I was thinking uh, like uh, petroleum is uh, just like a, the facilitator of, you know, the, 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 the economy. Mm -hmm. Because every other area, go to the farms, go to the factories, hospitals, schools. Although people see the transport, you know, the, 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 the communication, I mean, uh, the, uh, matatus and, you know, the trucks. Mm -hmm. But every other area, you go to the hospital. If a hospital today does not receive it, the, whatever they need for in terms of uh, fuel for maybe generating or running the generators, then it will stop. Mm -hmm. You go to schools, uh, if there is no petrol, I mean diesel in their compound and, and, and the petrol stations around there don't have, then it st stalls. Go to the farms, you know, they are doing irrigation, they are doing uh, every other thing. Mm -hmm. When we are talking about petrol, we are talking about now the bloodline of the economy. But uh, somehow in, the, in, in our house, there is a problem. Uh, only that people try, and I like, like Kenyans and want to congratulate them because we try to handle our own problems even if the, the government does not, does not really support. When COVID came in, like in March there, and there was a lockdown. Something just, uh, you know, came up, uh, and uh, it, 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 this is, it exposed us to a very dangerous situation business-wise, because for those multinationals, those the big boys who are able to, the companies who are, who are the, real, the actual importers of the products, uh, kind of denied us access to to their to their products. Now that one exposed us to a very dangerous situation because, in fact, some of our people had to just lock. Uh, I mean, close down business. Just like the schools, also it happened to us because. Mm -hmm. We could, net, we could not get products, and if you had to get uh, something to sell, then you had to go to your neighbor there and buy it from him at the uh, you know, uh, pump price so that you come and sell again at the same pump price. You could not manage it. So those people who are not strong enough had just to close shop and uh, look for something else to do. This exposes the, the weaknesses in our policies because it means if you are not strong enough, then uh, if something as natural as, I'm calling it natural, as COVID comes, then uh, the weak shall immediately, you know, be shaken off and just strangled. Such that uh, I thought, and when we were discussing we saw that there is a lot of weaknesses in government policies and uh, things need to be done. Okay. Uh, because, um, okay, we are here to stay, we have to survive. And I, I, I like Kenyans, they are, very, they are very sharp in their mind and they are ready to do things. But then the policies uh, kind of, you know, uh, um, slow them down and okay. you find that people are not able to move as fast as they can. Okay. They would. Um, let me get to Reginald as well, even as we approach our first break, Reg, because when you think about it, uh, when Jamal says um, that they haven't gotten any reprieve in terms of uh, bank loans, 
This really uh, has very many questions therein. Is it a policy enforcement issue? Is CBK not um, pressing this matter to make sure that the SMEs who had taken these facilities can actually get reprieved during this time? Where do we stop such instances from happening? Because you'd assume once this directive has been given, it works right across the board. Um, and unfortunately, you, you cannot run private enterprise on directives. A bank is not a state enterprise. It is a private enterprise. So you can direct them and decide to listen to you or not, or not listen to you. Mm -hmm. Because it is not government money, it is my money. If the, if the government had gone and said, we are guaranteeing all the loans mm -hmm. uh, to, to the Matatu sector, for, for example. Uh, so anyone who has taken a loan from the Matatu sector, we are guaranteeing it. So you banks don't ask for anything. Banks will have done it. But you can't come and say, uh, give moratoriums, uh, give all this. Um, and, and you see what the directive from Central Bank was ending in, in December. Yeah? And, and I think I said it here on the, on the last show. What happens after December? Because the situation has not changed. All these loans will become non-performing loans. loans. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And when they become non-performing loans, then the banks have to write them off. Okay. Who suffers? The person who suffers is the bank. Uh, he's not going to get any help from, from the government. The government is broke anyway, okay. so they, they cannot really help. So the banking sector has restructured like 1.2 trillion uh, loans, which is close to 50% of their total loan book. And by that restructuring, is just kicking the kid down the road. Because most of the businesses, um, like Mr. Karanja said, some have closed. They're not going to come back. They, that, loan, that loan is gone. So unfortunately, when you try to uh, use directives to run private enterprise, um, we are not a socialist country, we are a capitalist country. So if you go that route, then you have to suffer the consequences of becoming um, uh, a capitalist. Okay. There are other ways that government could have supported. Uh, okay. that, we'll that, be talking that, about that yes, after okay. the break, Reggie, because that's what we talk okay. about even as we move forward in terms of solutions. We've seen the challenges uh, not only from uh, the transport sector, but uh, right across uh, the business space. So how do you move forward and talk about solutions, especially as we get into a new year? That's a discussion we're having right here in studio. Don't forget, uh, we're asking you as well, what government measure would best benefit your business, whatever it is that you you're doing we'd love to hear from you uh, there are some numbers at the bottom of the screen you can also get me on twitter at i am jeff morte or at k24 tv uh, don't forget if you haven't gotten yourself a copy of your pd dial the number star 550 star 4 hash get it to your phone it's brought to you by the people daily and safaricom short break back with more